Okay, so 2.3 is going to be simplifying these square root expressions. Um, so in the previous part, we did have somewhere we actually got decimal answers. We don't want to do that here. Um, so we're going to be using this property right here. So if you can, there we go. So if you can break it into a product, you can break it up to where they can each have their own radical sign. And so what you're going to do here um, is you're going to look at the, the value inside the radical, and you're going to try to see if it's divisible by, you know, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on. Those are our perfect squares so that you can simplify that part of the radical. So um, you're going to get two numbers, one on the outside and one on the inside. So if you look at this first one right here, um, so 8, you, what we can do here is we can break that up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And because 4 times 2 is 8, so you can break it into a product. So I kind of skipped a step here. I already went ahead and broke it up like that. That's fine. Um, and so then I can go ahead and square root the, the 4. Square root of 4 is 2, and then I'm left with the square root of 2 inside. So that is, that's considered to be simplified. Um, and so that's better than doing a decimal. And so if you take trigonometry or anything like that, it's definitely going to be one of this way right here. Same thing in college algebra whenever it comes up. Okay, so I got a couple more, and I, I start them out pretty basic, but we'll eventually get into some that are going to be a little bit more challenging. So if you look right here, so we look at 12, and so you can see that 4 divides into it. So we're going to break this up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And then the, uh, the square root of 4, we can go ahead and take that. That's going to be a 2. So 2 and then square root of 3 is left behind. And so there you go. All right. Oops, that's stray mark. All right. So on 18, this time 4 doesn't go into it, but a 9 does. And that's a perfect square. So we'll break this. Oops. We'll uh, break this up into the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And then the square root of 9 is 3, and then we're left with the square root of 2 right there. Okay. So moving on. So 24. So let's see. That's So basically, you kind of, once again, you kind of have your perfect squares, and you kind of start on the high end. And you're like, okay, well, 16 obviously doesn't divide into it. 9 doesn't divide into it, but 4 does. And so we'll break this up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. And then we can go ahead and square root the 4, which is a 2. And then you're left with square root of 6 right there. So what's going on, just to kind of make sure we understand this, these two values are they're getting multiplied together. You don't have to put the, the symbol there, but just so it's clear um, that you're left with 2 square root of 6. and it's really, if you were to put that in a calculator, that would be the same thing as if you typed in square root of 24, you get the same exact result. Okay, number five, um, what they do is basically they're adding a whole number with a radical. And so really we just need to kind of focus on this part right here. The one's gonna be there, but um, it's not really gonna change much from what we've seen so far. So I'm gonna have one and then plus square root of 50, so you remember our perfect squares, we've got 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, and so on. And so, I mean, you can play around with this in the calculator, but hopefully 25 is going to jump out to you. And so we're going to go ahead and break that apart into the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. Okay. And so we can go ahead and square root the 25. So we're going to have 1 plus 5 square root of 2. And there you go. All right. Keep on moving on. Ooh, okay, so now we're going to throw some variables in here. So y'all, we saw this in the first part, in the first section of this unit. Um, but what's going to be different is that part of it's going to come out and part of it's not going to come out. 
And so if you look at this, the square root of x to the third power, that's the same thing as the square root of, um, let's see, um, sorry about that. So what I'm going to do is split it up, I guess. So I'm going to put x squared here. I'm going to put square root of x here. So if you remember, I talked about this in the first video, that the, the square root nullifies the square power. So what happens is I'm able to pull out an x, and then there's a square root of x still left behind inside the radical sign. So that is the answer right there. So there's three of them inside there. And so basically, a simple way of thinking about it is um, for every two, one gets to kind of come outside the radical sign. Okay, so for every two, one of them gets to exit the radical sign. And so um, what I'm going to do here is I'll go ahead and break this up to make it look like the what you've seen before. So I'm going to put this as x to the 12th power, and I have uh, just the square root of x. So x to the 12th power, um, if you remember from the previous video, what you can do is you can break this into x to the 6 raised to the second power. And then over here, I'll just have that square root of x. Um, and so what happens here is the radical cancels out with the square power. And so what we're left with is x to the sixth power and then square root of x right there. So there was one left behind again right there. Um, and so basically, like I said, for every two, you can pull one of them on the outside. So if you think about it, there's 13 of them. Um, and so the 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Um, so you're able to pull six of them out or basically x to the power of six, and then you, you have one, that odd one stays behind. Um, but you can see the numbers are going to start getting higher, but the, the, the approach isn't really going to change, though. And so what we can do is we can break this up into square root of x to the 46 power uh, times the square root of x, okay? And so when you look here, if you want to, you can manipulate this into x to the 23rd power squared. Like I said, this is an extra step. If you can get to your answer right away, that's that's great. That's fine too. So this cancels with this. So we're left with x to the 23rd square root of x right there. Okay. And that would be our answer right there. Okay. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of throw in a little bit of everything. So we're going to have the we're going to have the numbers, and then we're going to have the variables also. Um, so uh, what we'll do here? Um, so we're looking at ninety, and so if you if you pull out your perfect squares and start trying to figure out what divides into ninety that you could take a square root of, um, you'll eventually get to nine. 9 divides into 90. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this as one big radical. I could break it up into multiples like I've done previously, but I'm going to go ahead and just break this up into 9 times 10. And then the x to the 17th, I'm going to write that as x to the 16th times x. So I'm just kind of, I took one of those x's off um, from the x to the 17th power. So I just put one off to the side. So if you were to multiply this back together, you'd go right back to x to the 17th power. Okay, so now when I look at this, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go ahead and underline what I'm going to pull out of this radical sign. I like to say I'm pulling it out. I'm basically uh, um, square rooting it out because uh, right here, the square root of 9 is going to be 3, and the square root of x to the 16th um, it's going to be half of that, so it's going to be x to the 8. And then what's left behind is the 10 and the x. Okay. And to be honest, this, this just takes a lot of practice. It's not, it's not that difficult, but it, it is something that, you know, um, you'll probably work on it a little bit, step away, and then come back and have to work on it some more. It's just, just one of those topics, but once you, once you get pretty good at it, you'll, it'll be like nothing to you. Okay, so let's see. This is our next one right here. So we start looking at 54. And so let's see what divides into that. So not, not 49, obviously, not 36, not 25. Let's see, 16? I don't think so. Um, 
I think it's going to be nine again, actually. I think, let's see, that should be nine and six, I think. Yeah, nine and six. So we're going to break that up into nine times six. And then we'll break that x to the seventh into x to the sixth and x. Okay. And so we can square root the nine and the x to the power of six. So it's going to be three x to the power of three. And then what's left behind is the six and the x. And so that's what we're looking at. All right. Okay, so we're going to get into some interesting ones here. So let's see. We've got um, 117. So let's see what divides into that. So you can start trying like, you know, 81, 64, you know, 49, 36, and so on and so on. And, and it sometimes can be a little tedious, but you'll eventually get there. And um, it, it actually is going to be 9 again. Um, so 9 divides into that. Let's see how many times. 13. So that's going to be 9 times 13. And then you got x to the 11th. So once again, you're going to write it as x to the power of 10. And then we just siphon off one of those x's off to the side right there. So that now these are perfect squares that you can take. So the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of x to the power of 10 would become x to the power of 5. And then what's left inside here is a 13x. And there you go. Okay, so you'll see that the numbers are going to start getting a little bigger. So we see that on 12 right here. Um, so we got 300. Um, but when you, you know, this one's actually not that bad because if you think about it, 100 works and 300 is uh, three times 100. So I will be able to break that up into 100 times three. Okay, and then now this time we do have two variables, but the, the way you approach this doesn't really change. So we'll write this as x to the 12th times x. And we're going to write this as y to the 20th times y, okay, and so now we're going to square root those three parts right there. So the square root of 100 is going to be 10, the square root of x to the 12th is going to be x to the 6th, the square root of y to the 20th is going to be y to the 10th, and then we're going to be left behind with the 3xy, so the square root of 3xy. All right, so keep on moving on. All right, so our last two on this slide, so you got 288. So once again, you know, you pull out that list of your perfect squares and you just start dividing into 288 until you get to the right one. Um, and so uh, it should be 144, okay? So if we look at this, oops. On me. Okay, so if we look at this, what we'll do here is we'll write this as square root of 144 times 2. And we're going to break this up into a to the 58th power times a and then times b. Now that b uh, looks like it didn't have enough to where you could actually. Um, make a perfect square out of it. So that B is just going to be stuck there. The only thing that we're able to um, simplify are these two parts right here. So the square root of 144 is going to be 12. And the square root of A to the power of 58 is going to become A to the power of, let's see, so you're going to cut that in half. So that should be a 28. And then what's left inside here is a 2AB. And there you go. Okay. So this next one's kind of silly, to be honest. Um, you basically kind of want to approach it the same way. You'll uh, just see what you can factor out of the 98. 
um, if, if you can factor it into something that you can take the um, square root of. So I'm just going to kind of do it off on the side of the paper over here, and then we'll kind of deal with the other stuff that's going on here, okay? Um, and so let's see, I've got the square root of 98. And so we can go ahead and break that up. Let's see. Let's see, 81, no, 64, no, 49, bingo. So we can break this up into square root of 49 times the square root of 2. Square root of 49 is 7 square roots of 2. Okay. So let's go ahead and come back over here. So I can rewrite this as 14 plus 7 square root of 2 all over 7. Okay. And this is something I probably mentioned, should have mentioned earlier. We had a problem kind of similar to this where you were adding to it. Like you can't, you can't add the 14 and the 7 square root of 2 together, okay? And that we'll talk about that actually in a different section. But um, as far as adding and subtracting these, you can't really do it unless they have the same um, radical, like square root of 2. They'd have to both have square root of 2 um, with, uh, with the coefficient. And so you can't actually add these together, but what you can do is, uh, if you notice, it's getting divided by 7, and both parts are divisible by 7. And so what we'll do is we'll actually factor out a 7 on top. So we pull out a 7, and we're left with 2 plus basically 1 square root of 2 right there, and then all over 7, okay? Um, and so now you, you can cancel out those 7s right there. So just just to kind of make sure we see this, if you were to distribute the 7 back in, you'd go right back to the previous step. Obviously, we don't want to go backwards, but just so you can see, you know, 2 times 7 is 14. Um, and then 7 times the square root of 2 would be 7 times the square root of 2. I can stay like that. Um, but anyways, I factored that 7 out so that I could cancel these out. And so then that leaves me with 2, um, oops, see if I can plus. 2 plus the uh, 2 plus the square root of 2 is actually the final answer for that one. All right, so there's one page to go, but I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here and uh, make a second one for the for the last page.